right, so here he is, the emotionless, stoic Fedor Emelianenko, and fans have wondered aloud. Would he come to the UFC? How would he fare once he got here? Those questions get answers time. John, you said stoic, but when you watch Emelianenko walk to the octa, all you're missing is like snow coming down <laughs> and it getting real dark, and everybody's kind of walking with the big Russian hat because he just is that unknown that we have all wanted to kind of get a beat on. But what we do know is that this guy can absolutely fight. He's got tremendous wrestling, grappling, and unbelievable knockout power. Look for Fedor to try to end the night of his opponent very early. At one point, he was 31 and one in MMA. Fedor Emelianenko still regarded as the greatest heavyweight of all time. The last emperor, Fedor Emelianenko ready to reward his supporters once again here tonight. to a visual you thought you may never see Muhammad Ali taking his act to the octagon. And a lot of people out there betting on this man think he's going to realize success here tonight. Well, why would you not expect it, right? The guy has done everything he has ever said he was going to do, from becoming the Olympic gold medalist, to becoming the heavyweight world champion, to becoming the greatest boxer the world has ever seen. This guy is a fearless competitor. He has tremendous hand speed unbelievable footwork, but it won't be those gifts that allow him to find success in the UFC. He's going to have to mix everything up. Sort of felt like he had exhausted the boxing world. Felt like this was the next professional challenge. Perhaps a case of be careful what you wish for. Muhammad Ali gracing the octagon here tonight. The greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali. Steps inside the octagon. He is ready to fight. Our tail of the tape for this heavyweight championship fight. All right, now for the official introductions, the veteran voice of the octagon, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, presenting the challenger, Fedor! And now introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner, presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of the world, Muhammad Herb Dean, our referee for this one. Well, a true pinch me moment for mixed martial arts fans around the world as they have locked the octagon door behind Muhammad Ali and the all timer Fedor Millionaire. You know, John, they talk about the greatest of all time. We get an opportunity to see two guys who at one point were considered the greatest of all time in their craft, as Muhammad Ali is considered the greatest boxer of all time. And when Fedor Emelianenko was on that run, many thought he was the greatest MMA heavyweight of all time. These two are fighting for history tonight. Let's see who gets the job done. Oh, and he tags him with the straight. Nice job there by Fedor. Those are big strikes. Clean left punch followed by the right. Takedown defense is there. Oh, how technical is that? Nice straight punch. Now he's got the single collar in the clinch. Ali's bleeding from the mouth. Daniel looks as though there's a cut on his lip. Thankfully, he's a lot tougher than I am. Takedown defense holds up. All right, gets inside, gets the single collar tie here. Nice job to raise. Oh, huge shot, finds the target there. 
great shot lands. Now he's got to go find that follow-up attempt. The kill shot. Lands a big right hand coming in. Under two minutes to go. Oh, man, this is wild. These guys are both throwing everything with fight-ending intentions. Oh, that's a big right hand that got through. Big kick lands. They're so evenly matched, and they're going to attack. Timely defense there. Huge block for him. One minute to go in the round. Oh, oh he is hurting for certain. Strong outside leg kick. Back to the jab now, no good. So that's the end of the round. Potential adversity here. He's got a cut on his cheek sustained from that strike in the round. Now the focus becomes maximizing these 60 seconds, shutting that cut and preventing it from becoming a major factor here moving forward. All right, so there's the horn signifying the end of the round. We had a knockdown there, but not a knockout. No, it wasn't a knockout, but you can't take those shots. That big punch landed, and it sat him down. If he gets hit with another one of those, it might be good night, Irene. You ready to fight? Ready. All right, round two. Oh! He needs to start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. Ali's punch to the body is blocked, so no damage done there. Straight right, he misses. And now they are throwing both sides with conviction. Well, you see him land the jab there. He's got the reach advantage. That is a huge shot there, DC. I'm not sure how he stayed up there. I mean, when you get hit with a shot like that, to stay standing shows and talk to your tough. So pretty good recovery by the opponent after getting stunned pretty good. Got to capitalize on those opportunities. I mean, you can't wait to come out with You don't get them as often as you'd like. So if you get a guy hurt, you got to find a way to finish the fight. All right, so the uppercuts have been a big part of the storyline in this one, but the setups have really been key for him. He's not telegraphing that strike, and the opponent hasn't been able to adjust. He has not been able to see them. It's a very tricky punch, especially in the way that he throws it. He throws it at a time when you expect so many different strikes, but it's because he has such a vast knowledge of just finding that strike. Millionenko's lower jaw does not look good. I don't think it's broken, but starting to show some obvious signs of struggle. Oh, huge connection by him there. He needs to get on his bicycle, John. He needs to get into space so that he doesn't get finished. Slips the punch nicely there. Under two minutes to go. His work. The right hand just misses. So he goes. Oh, he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got to press him. He's got to go chase that finish down now. Swing and a miss by Emilianenko. Under a minute to go. Flips that left hand. Oh, he just flipped the guard. Now his opponent's really on the ropes. His opponent's on Beach Street. He's hurt so bad. I don't know what he's going to do to stay in this fight. 
Oh, almost like you saw the skin swell right away after he landed that strike. So that trainer's gonna have to bring in the in swell to try to deal with the swell. Because this guy is his piece up. All right, round three coming up next. All right, so there's the end of the round. You see the blood trickling down as he makes his way back to the stool. Cut on the bridge of the nose, or so it appears from the strike in that round. Cut man getting right to work. All right, so there's the horn. He got knocked down by a punch in that round, but he is able to survive. We'll see if they can make some adjustments. He's as tough as they come. He took that shot and he kept plodding forward. He got off of his butt. He got himself off of the canvas and tried to get right back to work. But he cannot take many more of these. You don't want to be the guy that's testing how tough that your chin is. Ready to fight? Ready. Here we go, third round of this championship fight. That was a beautiful hook. It landed perfectly, and it hurt his opponent very bad. All right, he's been very clean. Good right here. There it is again. Look at that. Barely missed on an upper cut right here. Big ground and pound. All right, feet on the hips here. Oh, and he escapes up to his feet. Very nice. Missed on the right hand. Offensive fight. Nice job to block the shot there. Oh, my Well, DC kind of just playing with him at this point. I think he's got to go in and just get him out of there. Well, he's trying, but he gets a little bit anxious, so he starts to throw a lot of punches, and not, now he's looking arm triangle on the opposite side. When he goes to finish, look, he's got it locked. When he goes to finish, he has to pass his body all the way to the opposite side, drop his chest to get enough pressure to finish the technique. Nicely done. Oh, you gotta love the ground and pound strikes here. Oh, and another punch on the ground gets through. May need some defense here. All right, seems as though his sole focus is attacking that cut. And man, it's getting bad now. A lot of blood flow. Yeah, as it should be. Well, he should be focused on getting to that cut, making his opponent pay. He did the work. He opened up the cut. Now it's on him to continue down the path and make the ringside position come in here and try to stop this fight. All right, so there it is again. He's been very efficient with his ground and pound striking game tonight. And now they're starting to pile. He's starting to pile them together. Punch after punch are starting to land in the top position. Most fighters will tell you offensive wrestling is the hardest, most exhausting thing. Especially if you're... Well, he continues to manhandle him here on the ground. Under the net. Oh, and now he flattens him out, DC. A couple hooks in. This could be trouble. Look at all that hip pressure he has into his opponent's back. Now he'll start to rain down brutal ground and pop. And you better intelligently defend here. This could be the beginning of the end. Well, this is exactly what you like to see. Nice combination of ground and pound punches. Outstanding pressure and activity by Fader. All right, three rounds down. Potentially two more to go. We are headed to the championship round. All right, there's the horn, and what a round, champ. We got to talk about the knockdown. When you knock somebody down like that, got, it got to be kind of fun to stretch your way back to the store. I mean, you are 10 foot tall. When you can <laughs> drop another person with a strike, you are 10 foot tall. Now, the issue is he did not find the finish, and he used a lot of energy trying to finish that fight. All right, so there's the end of the round, and on one side, thrill on the other agony after that knockdown. Yeah, he was able to really damage him with that big punch. You see the hands, the speed, how sharp he is, how technical he is. It allows him to land in spots where his opponent is winging punches. Great strike landed, Ready, great punch landed Ready. to put his opponent down. We have arrived at the fourth round fight schedule for five five-minute rounds. Oh, nice. He gets back to his feet. 
right hand. Absolutely perfect, John. Great placement on that uppercut. Swing and a miss with that punch by Emilianenko. Oh, he lands another strike to the body, really starting to pile up these body shots here in the latter stages of this fight. You didn't see a lot of that in the earlier rounds, making up for lost time here. Well, straight right hand has been a good weapon for him. He misses with it there. Ali's taking aim at that cut right now and hard to blame him. Yeah. I'm not sure how many more of these his opponent can take. Massive shot that he landed. Great job. Oh! Throws a big right hand but doesn't find its home. Nice defense there, huge block. Well, not sure if he's lighter on his feet or what it is, but these last couple of rounds, he's been far more aggressive, a lot more pressure. Oh, he's really starting to light him up now. So three minutes have flown off the fight clock there. That shot blocked by Emelianenko. Trying to hammer. That's as good a punch as he's thrown all night. The punch that lands down the middle, the one that you don't feel, is the ones that land perfect. And that one landed perfectly. Just misses with the jab there. Fedor the Emelianenko gets tattooed by that stiff jab. Folks, that is a clean knockout result tonight. I mean, just wow. What a performance by this young man knocking his opponent out with a single shot like that. And here we go inside the octagon for the official decision to Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean's called a stop to this contest at four minutes, 50 seconds of round number four. Declaring the winner by knockout and still the undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of the world, Muhammad. And still the baddest man on the planet. I know you haven't retired yet, but uh, I don't necessarily want to see you share the octagon with that monster. I mean, this dude is a savage. There is prestige in being...